Greetings everyone, Lusekelo Kang for here and I'm giving you today for today a case summary of the case of Christine Mulundika and others versus the people 1995 Supreme Court judgment. Hope you enjoy the summary. So to start off, before going into the nitty gritty of this case, it is worth pointing out that this case is an authority in constitutional law, in human rights law, and in legal process. So there are lots and lots of principles that are found here in this case. So I hope you take note of them as we go through this. So this case specifically is a Supreme Court judgment. So obviously it was an appeal. So the appellants in this case were Christine Mundika and her fellow appellants. So what started this whole scenario was where they organized, wanted to do a match, a certain match. Now, according to Section 5.4 of the Public Order Act, it provided that in order for want to do any sort of march rally or procession they had to get a permit from the police now they didn't they notified the police but didn't get that permit and went ahead with their march so therefore they were arrested based on that law so this led to them applying to the or not applying this they were arrested right so now they were they were of course found liable for committing uh, this offense of organizing a rally without getting a police permit according to section 5.4 of the Public Order Act. Now, before the High Court, they argued that their rights were violated when the police decided to arrest them because they said according to in then in that constitution the way it was uh, arranged that their rights found in uh, article 20 and 21 uh, the rights to freedom of assembly uh, were violated right to freedom of assembly and association were violated when the police decided to arrest them for simply organizing that march while the state argued that no, they did not violate the rights, but they were in contravention of the law. So, Christian Mundika and her co accused before the High Court were arguing that no, we didn't commit an offense, and actually, it's the law in question which is unconstitutional. And because it's unconstitutional, it should be done away with it should be declared unconstitutional and therefore void uh, the other side argued differently and the high court gave a judgment in favor of the state so this led to christian Monica appealing right so this is what was the main discussion so the judgment of the court the holding of the court rather was that uh, section 5-4 of the Public Order Act was unconstitutional when it required that people get a permit in order for them to organize an assembly or public meeting. So the court in giving its rationale started off by looking at Article 21, which says that the constitution guarantees the freedom of assembly and association and that no one should be restricted of their fundamental freedoms unless the individual consents to that and then the court goes on in their main argument when talking about derogations that though every right has a derogation derogation should not make the lump sum of the right use that expression in other words a derogation is not meant to reduce the enjoyment of that right but a derogation rather is meant to enable the full enjoyment of that right and here the court quoted two uh, there are many cases that were cited but one uh, one that would be cited in particular would be the attorney general for Rhodesia versus Hagamata 1959 where the judge noted this from a court that 
In a democratic society, no right is absolute. However, there is a difference between regulation and infringement. So, bring out that point, the court was saying that in as much as a right is not absolute, whatever laws are passed in relation to derogation should not be seen should not be seen as infringing on that right, but rather regulating it it should be a regulation and not a limitation then if we go further another ca uh, case that was cited was a american case there are many that were cited but i refer to this one shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, a 1969 case where the court stated that uh where the court was American court that was faced with a similar provision in relation to where the people had to get a permit and that provision was declared unconstitutional because it violated people's right to freedom of assembly and lastly what we have in our case that is cited in the same case is an Indian case of Pambam and another this is uh, oh, pardon, rather a Tanzanian case, not Indian, Tanzanian case of Pambam and another versus the Attorney General and another. So here the, there, was, there were many things that were judged and said in this case, but once it was in relation to public gatherings. However, there's one point in particular that is worth noting when the court was giving its judgment. It said here, and I read this quote, Derogations of a right enshrined in the Constitution uh, can only be justified on two premises. Firstly, the law must be lawful. In other words, the law in question should not be arbitrary but contain enough safeguards to prevent abuse. Secondly, the limitation placed by the said law must be reasonably necessary to achieve the legitimate objective which it set up for. Therefore, any derogation in la lacking in these two elements is unconstitutional. So it's bringing out that element that if you are bringing out a derogation of any law, of any right, it has to be a derogation that is seen, number one, as something that is ensuring that there aren't any rooms for abuse. And two, that derogation found in law, in a law, to a certain right, has to achieve the purpose of that law in question, which in the case of the Public Order Act was to maintain order. Now, the court then looked from there, looking at the case at hand, and saw that the specific section, section 5.4 of the Public Order Act, was not only infringing on the right to freedom of assembly but also did not have enough safeguards to prevent abuse from the police officers and then the court made this very strong statement that the right to freedom of assembly is not a privilege but a right seeing that it's a right it's something that people should enjoy without any limitations right limitations in the sense of people should be able to enjoy th that right if there are limitations, the limitation should be reasonable and that which does not prevent the full enjoyment of that right, but with that which is reasonable in a democratic society. So that's they looked at that provision and said that no, it is undemocratic, it is unlawful and unconstitutional. Therefore, they declared that provision as an no and void and ruled in favor of Christian Mundika and others. Of course, this later led in the years following to the repeal of that section of the Public Order Act. So, if you have been paying attention, there are so many principles that were said in this case. Of course, the court started off when giving the judgment that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Therefore, any law that is in contravention of the provisions of the constitution is no and void so they started off by saying that and now looking at the law in question which was the public order act and specifically section 5 4 
whether it met the criteria of being constitutional. And the constitutional provision in question was the Bill of Rights, specifically the right to freedom of assembly, as, as encompassed in Article 21 of the Constitution. Article 21 of the Constitution. So that's what they were looking at in terms of whether it was constitutional or not. Yes, that was what they were trying to analyze. And then we see there the court now explaining derogations in relation to human rights. What is, con what is a valid derogation in law? It must not be something that limits the enjoyment of those rights but something that is seen as reasonable in a democratic society. So if a derogation, all right, if a derogation limits the full enjoyment of that right, limits in the sense that the right changes from a right to a privilege, then that derogation is invalid. Taking note from that case. And with those two points, you now have the court declaring that specific provision of the Public Order Act as no and void. So you, have, you see those principles. Constitutional supremacy in relation to legal process. You see uh, that is also a principle in constitutional law, supremacy of the constitution. And how if any law is in contravention of it, it's no and void. And you also see the aspect of human rights, what the rights need to be fully enjoyed and respected by the state. Of course, human rights do have derogations, but derogations shouldn't limit the enjoyment. They shouldn't prevent enjoyment of that right.